everybody. Before I get started, I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who helped me reach 200,000 subscribers. This is a huge milestone in my career that I quite literally never thought I'd experience. My wild goal when I first started my channel was 100 subscribers. To be at 200,000 is a dream come true, and I honestly cannot thank you guys enough. Cliff and I have been bouncing around ideas regarding something special we could do for you guys in order to celebrate this achievement. Once we figure out what we're doing, we'll let you know. Until then, it's time for today's topic, and boy, what a topic it is. Valentine's Day was just last week, which means people are either really sad or they totally got laid. In honor of all the baby making, I'm breaking down my list of the 10 best tropes in erotic fiction. This is the weirdest list I've ever made and I'm putting it on the internet because I'm stupid. Now a lot of people confuse romance and erotica because they often go together, so just to be clear, romance and erotica are not the same thing. Thus, this list will be focused exclusively on sexy time tropes. Before we get into it, thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community specifically for creators where millions come together in order to take their next step in creativity. I highly recommend Skillshare whether you're a total beginner or a seasoned pro. They have thousands of classes at all different skill levels in web design, illustration, and of course, creative writing. Their classes are broken down into bite-sized video lessons, and most classes in total are less than 60 minutes long, so they're super easy to fit into your schedule. I personally like to reward myself with lessons after I have achieved one of my writing goals. I'm not only a student at Skillshare, I'm also a teacher. I've got two classes all about digital marketing for writers. One is about how to grow your author platform. The other is my personal step by step process for releasing a book with little to no assistance. Skillshare has some goodies just for you guys. Stick around until the end of this video for details. But first we're talking about erotica, cause why not? Tis the season. Disclaimer number one, if it wasn't clear already, this video is about sexual stuff. If you got virgin ears and you wanna keep them that way, get out of here. Disclaimer number two, while I will be talking about what I believe are the best erotic tropes, I will not be basing these decisions on my personal sexual preferences. You guys don't get to know me like that. I will be speaking about tropes from a personally removed perspective, so don't try to read into any of this shit cause it ain't gonna work. You nasty. And if you wanna keep up with all of my tropes, videos, the best and the worst, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos on Wednesdays with bonus videos sprinkled in the mix. And I have a sneaking suspicion that there will be many bonus videos coming up very soon. Number one, satire. My all time favorite type of erotica by far is satirical erotica. Who doesn't love a dick joke? I know I do. Satirical erotica deserves more props than it gets because it is so Oh, damn funny. It's like an antidepressant that also features creative euphemisms for butthole. Nothing puts a pep in your step quite like a coin purse or a dirty cave of secrets. What kills me is when people think erotic satire is serious and then comment on how dumb it is. That's the point. It's not stupid, you are. Number two, camp. Another great thing about erotica is that it's a genre that doesn't take itself too seriously. We are here to get titillated by titties and tantalized by testes. Because of this, erotica is free to indulge in tropes that are often written off as exaggerated or cheesy. This is not Pride and Prejudice, okay? It's a book about the Joodles. As someone who can be a stickler about books, it's fun to indulge from time to time in stories that are campy. Not every reader wants a philosophical message. Sometimes you just want a boner. Number three, reverse harems. You know what's better than one penis? Seven! At the same time! That actually sounds painful, but I digress. Let's be real, for a long time, men were celebrated for boning as many women as possible, while women were expected to be chaste, lest the church finds out. Fast forward to today. What's one of the biggest trends in erotica? One woman with a bazillion dudes. I'm not 
not one to dude hop myself, but I support a woman's right to do just that. And I support an author's right to include 10 shirtless love interests within the same story. Thanks for leveling the playing field, erotica. Number four, dominatrixes. Is that the plural of dominatrix? Dominatrixes? Dominatri? <laughs> Dommies? Dommies? I don't think that's right. <laughs> Hear me out. Ever since Fifty Shades of Grey, BDSM erotica is everywhere. And you know what 99% of these stories have in common? Doms. Dom, 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 da, dom. So when I see an author say to hell with you, I'm writing a dominatrix, I say, give this person a medal. It's nice to see writers do something original amid a sea of authors beating the same dead horse. Why do the dudes always gotta be the one wielding the whip? Let a lady dish out the spankings. Give the girls a chance. Number five, multi-genre erotica. I feel like multi-genre erotica is a gateway for every fangirl and fanboy to indulge in their wildest fantasies. We know you're obsessed with Harry Potter, but be honest. Honest, you would have liked that series a whole lot better if all of the characters were hot, grown up, and doing one another. Isn't that right? That's what multi-genre erotica brings to the table. Fantasy erotica? It's like Lord of the Rings, but with peepees. It basically gives people that fantasy they've been craving, but have been too embarrassed to admit. Meanwhile, erotica writers are out here saying, hey man, I know you got a boner for elves. It's okay, I do too. Step into my van. Number six, thruples. One of the most annoying things about love triangles is that they're unnecessary. If you like them both, do them both with their consent. Erotica is one of the only genres with enough spunk to feature thruples, and for that I say, Good for you. Way to break through societal norms. I'd rather read about a fictional threesome than one person taking an entire series to decide who to bone. Number seven, characters who know what a clitoris is. It's been a long time coming, but it's finally happened. Erotica writers have discovered the clitoris. Well, some have, but it's a start. For a long time, it was pretty much impossible to find any sort of understanding about the female anatomy when it came to sex scenes in fiction but the tides are turning. People finally put a mirror between their legs and were shocked by their discovery. I don't think this point requires explanation. It's just nice to read a sex scene and not feel the need to throw myself out a window. Number eight, body diversity. People clown on erotica, but it's one of the only genres that I see regularly celebrating different body types and skin tones. Even better, no one is apologizing for their shape. She's a big girl, she's beautiful, she knows it, we know it. Know how we know? Cause she's getting it in. Everyone wants a piece of that booty and I'm here for it. It's just refreshing to see such a wide variety of sex appeal, especially when so many other genres keep pumping out the same four foot nine waifs and six foot nine roid heads. I don't know if you were just trying to write easier access, but she literally comes up to his waist. Kinda gross. Just saying. Number nine, male virgins. Every other genre on the planet fetishizes the crap out of female virgins. The beautiful doe-eyed virgin meets slutty McMahon whore. Don't get me wrong, erotica features this trope all the time, but it also fetishizes the crap out of male virgins. Equality. There are stories about the gorgeous Adonis who's been saving himself for his childhood sweetheart. There's also the naive hunk who opens himself up to the tactic bad boy from the wrong side of the tracks. Look, if you're gonna diddle yourself to a man-made construct, at least don't discriminate. Virginal men are sexy too. And number 10, unreasonably gorgeous human beings. I'm always telling writers it's fine to write hot people, but try to make them realistically hot. However, when it comes to erotica, I can take that advice and shove it up my ass. It's a sexual fantasy. No one wants to read about ugly people smashing their private together, unless that's your kink, in which case, whatever. Big, small, short, tall, doesn't matter. These people are gonna look like gods and goddesses, and really, isn't that all we want for us spank banks? I think so. So that's all I got for you today. A huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. If you'd like to take the next step in your creativity, or if you want to learn a ton of new skills, I highly recommend Skillshare. Skillshare is super affordable. An annual subscription is less than 10 bucks a month. However, right now you can get two months of Skillshare 
Skillshare Premium for free by clicking the link below. That's two months of access to thousands of classes, including my classes. So click the link, learn a bunch of new stuff, and save yourself some cash. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos on Wednesdays, and if you want to be alerted as soon as I upload, ring that bell. The Save Your Champion is available in ebook, paperback, hardback, signed hardback, as well as audiobook. If you are new to audiobooks, you can listen to TSC on Audible for free. I have all the information listed below. And be sure to follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Tumblr, Facebook, and of course, you can tweet me at Jenna Marassi. Bye. This is Brondi's. Why the fuck haven't you subscribed to Jenna's channel? Do you really want to face me? If you don't do it, you know what will happen. I'll rip out your tongue, torture you, then leave your rotten corpse out for the birds to feast on it. Now press the goddamn button. And the bell too.